Welcome once again. Right now we're in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 3, right through to the end of the chapter, verse 25. I call this the smorgasbord of exhortation. Remember those who are in bonds, as bound with them, and those who are ill-treated, since you are also in the body. You're all part of one body. You're all part of the same team. You're all one big family. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the bed be undefiled. But God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Be free from the love of money, content with such things as you have. For he said, I will in no way leave you, neither will I in any way forsake you. And that's found in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. So that with good courage we say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? And that is found in Psalm 118, verses 6 and 7. Remember your leaders, men who spoke to you the word of God, and considering the results of their conduct, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's a very famous and a very favorite verse of a lot of people. But you need to understand exactly what that means. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, who was and is and is to come. That's the name of God. But more than that, you think about it now, it's very clear in the New Testament that Jesus partook in the creation. He always existed right from the very beginning. Adam knew him. Abel knew him. That's why he sacrificed the firstborn lamb. Noah knew him. And as Jesus, he became a preacher of righteousness. Abraham knew him. Even Jesus said before Abraham was, I am. Abraham saw me. How did Abraham see him? Because Jesus existed, at least in spiritual form, from creation until he was incarnated. All of the patriarchs knew Jesus very well. When Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Moses and Elijah came, they didn't say, oh, nice to meet you, Jesus. I heard a lot about you. You know, I know heaven was all talking about you all the time. Nice to meet you. You know, no, it was not a first time meeting. Moses and Elijah knew Jesus very, very well. Remember, Jesus said to the Pharisees, you search the scriptures, the Torah, the Nevi'im, the prophets, the Ketuvim, the scriptures, because in them alone, in and of themselves, you think that you have life. But no, they all speak of me. When David wrote, he wrote of me. When Moses wrote, he wrote of me. Why and how? Because they knew Jesus. When Isaiah wrote, he wrote of me. When Jeremiah wrote, he wrote of me. When Ezekiel wrote, he wrote of me. How did all of the patriarchs and prophets know about Jesus? In the same way that we know Jesus, even though he's not here in the flesh, we know him by the Spirit. He has appeared to many of us and changed our lives completely and instantly. Abram became Abraham. He did with Jacob. Jacob became Israel. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. When Moses wrote the Torah, it was all about Jesus. If your Jesus is not compatible with the law of God, if you look at the law of God and you don't say, well, that's Jesus. If you can't say that, then you got the wrong Jesus. And you're probably serving the golden calf Jesus, the Jesus that just looks good, that just, it just adorns your life. It just, oh, you know, you feel good. You get the warm, fuzzy feelings. Oh, you know, you, it, you, it just sits there and blesses you. It never rebukes you of your sin. It never convicts you of your sin. It never talks to you about righteousness. It never leads you in the life of holiness. And it never chastises you. It's just a golden ornament in your life. And if that describes your Jesus, you need to get the real Jesus. Jesus in the Old Testament is the same as Jesus in the New Testament, which is the same as Jesus today, which is the same as Jesus tomorrow, which is the same as Jesus 5,000 years from now. Verse 9, Don't be carried away by various and strange teachings, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not by foods, through which those who were so occupied were not benefited. We have an altar from which those who serve the holy tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy place by the high priest as an offering for sin are burned outside the camp. And that's found in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 27. 
Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people through his own blood, suffered outside of the gate. Let's therefore go out to him, outside of the camp, bearing his reproach. For we don't have here an enduring city, but we seek that which is to come. Through him, then, let's offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. And that's referencing Psalm 50, verse 23. Continually, that is, the fruit of the lips which proclaim allegiance to his name. But don't forget to be doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Notice here that it says that God is well pleased with doing good and sharing. That flies in the face of those who say that the only thing that pleases God is not doing anything, but rather just faith. That's not what this says. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they watch on behalf of your souls, as those who will give account, that they may do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be unprofitable for you. Pray for us, for we are persuaded that we have a good conscience Desiring to live honorably in all things, I strongly urge you to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep with the blood of an eternal covenant, our Lord Jesus, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. But I exhort you, brothers, endure the word of exhortation. Why would he encourage them to endure the word of exhortation? Because exhortation is not just tickling your ears, okay? For I have written to you in a few words. Know that our brother Timothy has been freed, with whom, if he comes shortly, I will see you. Greet all your leaders and all the saints. The Italians greet you. Grace be with you all. Amen.